Cutter. You're going to start getting pressurized ships now. Lou and I will show you the ropes when you're ready. Yeah, another big fail there. We were talking at nothing because we were both still muted. Oh! Uh, yeah, I'm... 
I was busy with a rush drop on this beforehand, trying to make a new outro and intro. Well, not a fully, completely new intro, just to give it an adjustment if this turned out to work, which it didn't. Uh, yeah, to recap what we were saying there, actually, we might as well abandon shift and start this over again for the people listening in on that. Take two. Uh, yeah, basically, I was. I was test yeah, testing hey, something Gunner, with you're OBS. Start getting pressurized ships now. Lou and I'll show you the ropes when you're ready. Basically, in the last few streams, whenever I'd switch between the pre-stream, between the intro scene in OBS and the well stream screen scene, why do you keep calling it stream? The stream scene in OBS, there'd be a few seconds gap where it wouldn't capture the game for some reason. So instead I moved everything into one scene, a, a test scene, uh, where I'd have to put the intro, in, I'd have to turn the intro and outro off by hand. Uh, hopefully I'd be able to do that through shortcuts. And to see if that would, well, eliminate that uh, that footage gap, but apparently it didn't, or at least not in this time, maybe because I didn't have the game selected. And, uh, yeah, welcome back to Heart Space Shipbreaker for the third time. And this stream will probably finish up the story that they've released so far. Uh, if that take, if that goes too fast, we'll just, we'll just tear apart a few other ships just for fun. And, yeah, next time when we will, next time that I will stream this game is when another big patch comes out. Uh, yeah, today... Yeah, that, that test with turning the intro on and off failed. It's beyond the obvious thing of us freaking mu staying muted. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, yes, I'm here again, folks. The crazy Drakir. Also, uh, I don't know if it... Now I can't remember if the bit I said about the intro and outro if I repeated that in the un unmuted part, so I'll just repeat that. I'm uh, The outro that I have, the music on that, has been getting copyright claimed a few times now. Not that it's getting blocked, but not that it, it's... You know, what they'd say is that it isn't ad uh, eligible. Not that, I <clears throat> not that I put ads on my videos anyways, but I'm, remove, I'm changing it out for something that is copyright free. Uh, just in case some company decides to be a dick and put my ads on my videos because I want these to stay clean of advertisements of all sorts Well Any official advertising if I if there is some stuff in that I'd advise Personally and not like that personally where people are bought off to say that like the, the scripts are fucking obvious uh, Yeah But enough talk about that Let's move on to the training on pressurized <coughs> on pressurization. All right, a friend Lou hey. thinks she's the resident expert on how to deal with a pressurized shift, so I'm gonna let her take the lead on this one. She always give me a hard time, but you know I'm good. Sure thing, Lou. Take it away. Okay. Hey, Rook. Time for the fun stuff. And by fun, I mean incredibly dangerous. There can be lots of pockets of pressurized space throughout a ship. It's best to scan ahead and see what's up. Activate your scanner and let's have a look. Your scanner will show you information about the interior of the ship, including whether a room is pressurized or not. Red is unpressurized and green is pressurized. Essentially, if you make a cut between the two spaces, you'll cause a violent decompression. Uh... The correct term is explosive decompression. <laughs> explosive, same deal. <laughs> okay, we don't want to crack into the ship and have it pop. When a ship is pressurized like this, best to go in for the airlock. Use the scanner to locate it. Now, back on the airlock to pressurize it. There should be a switch in there. So, I, I hope that the... Uh, the game audio is a lot more audible because apparently in the last few games they, they've been real quiet compared to Drakir and me. And you're in. Most ships are pressurized 
systems, you can depressurize them using the atmosphere regulator. Should be one good side. Although, as you'll learn, sometimes there are good reasons to keep the rooms pressurized. Yep, yes. We want one of those. Right, uh, I'm going to say this mm -hmm. game is pretty good at the science itself with its music. That's all there is to it. Now, sometimes you're gonna have to depressurize the step violently. <coughs> Explosively. Explosively. If you don't want to get stuck through a one-inch hole section, use your hands to grab onto any nearby surface. Oh, uh, and watch out for differential pressure between areas of the ship. Sometimes compartments can have isolated pressurization systems. Remember, scan ahead. And yep, that about here. covers it. Good luck out there, Rook. Blue out. Yeah, the cockpit is still uh, pressurized. So for us, it would be best to pressurize this place Your again. Pressure level increasing. And, okay, then this opens. And oh, hello, a data drive. Right, so. I was to say before the NBC to drop me. But the muses can almost drown out the, the characters here. It, the characters are very soft speaking to begin with in this game. Hmm. Let's see, for some reason the OBS windows, when it, they. I don't know what is causing that, it, but the fonts on it just completely go minimized. Okay. <laughs> that was accidental. Uh, okay, these things didn't have a, a audio to them, I think, earlier. And Level decreasing. Okay, so that's not going to work then. And yeah, I'd forgotten to repair my gear decreasing. since last time, but yeah, <laughs> since we had to well, restart the mission, might as well start it again in the same condition. Okay then, oh, wait, wait, now the. Oh no. For a moment I thought that the entire thing was depressurized, but yeah, the, the outer door is still closed. Okay then. Hmm. Yeah, the moment that we depressurize this area, the other one, we're going to have to break open the other ones. Air and pressure level decreasing. Yeah, let's let's get that out of the way, even though we have no use for it. Oh there. Okay, they actually got audio with that now. Uh, we open this up. Airlock pressure levels dropping. It also gives that little danger notification if you're looking at something that is pressurized. So that's an, an extra little layer of safety. Okay. I uh, didn't really need to move that, so let's just get cutting. I did expect you to blow up something by accident. I don't know why. Yeah, we'll have we'll have to violently decompress the uh, insides and the cockpit now. So let's at least get some vulnerable stuff out of its way. Because I, uh, something I did say earlier, though, when, while we were still mute, is that. It is, it isn't as much an explosive decompressor, or at least it wasn't. It might be that they have made those uh, much, much worse. Uh, did that go up instead? <laughs> uh, is that being blocked by something? Hmm. Okay, what? Is there something? Oh, no, no, right? Okay, why the heck were you bouncing back up? Come on. Pull you out like your oversized Jenga piece. <laughs> or not. Why is this thing being so stubborn? Uh, oh, well, let's go and... Oh, oh yes, these are, these are the bigger nacelles. The previous ones we could cut down, or we could cut free uh, from the outside, but these you have to remove, these you have to cut free from the inside. These antennas, though, are still the same as ever. 
Tragedies all hell. Salvage deposit accepted. Credits transferred. I still don't get why the game seems to move us around so, so swiftly secured. at some points. Like those sudden movements, like a full 40 degrees. Hmm. Oh well. I don't get these antenna bases, yet there's no real... You can't cut those free without destroying them. So those are a bit of a nuisance. Okay, back to the inside. And if this pen is going to be difficult, then we might as well move on to its brothers. Brothers? Yeah, the other panels. Yeah, yeah, would be surprised to be fair of uh, turning them broader. <laughs> okay, let's be a bit careful. If we... Hmm, if, we, we if we cut these four, then the outer walls could react violently, because those are only sealed by being uh, attached to the front uh, half of the ship. So if we cut these four and then push the cockpit away, or actually... No, it, it might be that the moment that these four are cut, that the sides might, well, decompress on their own. And yes, I've seen this one. I should have picked it up much earlier. I'm pretty sure this, this track is new. I... Yeah, I think these guys or well, these developers uh, <clears throat> they probably have enough money to have their own music made for this. Oop, and up. Oops. Uh, yeah, that. <laughs> uh, I forgot the back is also only a tad. <laughs> that was. <laughs> Okay, there was at least a much less dangerous decompression. Uh, the heck is this? Oh, the... Oh, you did make a boom! Yeah, not a boom, but more like a... <laughs> big-ass suck. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wasn't completely paying attention there. But, yeah, that, that could have been a lot worse if the reactor or an engine was in here. Well, actually, there is an engine in here. Oh, uh, <laughs> accidental show of how that works then. Oh, and also something else new. Flush the fuel. This should, yep, there we, you could see it there. The light on the fuel pipe went off. So that means no more fuel in it. Okay. So we can't. We can't cut this uh, piece free now. And there we go. No uh, new boom. <laughs> Object accepted for processing. Credit deposited. Sounds okay. like a waste of fuel. Uh, it's being it's being flushed flushed back into the uh, the fuel tank. Oh, all right. And it's not wasteful. And then we send this thing over there. Just weave a few. But yeah, decompressing an area can be dangerous, but it can also be useful because, well, you saw that thing. The back of the ship ended up in a much better position for us to deal with it. You get off first. In you go. Okay. And let's see. It didn't actually seem to move the ship much. It, it has moved it. It is off 
it's a bit tilted now. Probably been pushed forward some. But yeah, we could have had much, much worse with the decompression. I believe you somehow. <laughs> yeah, I think things could have been hitting other things and uh, blowing stuff up and such. And yeah, here's how these bigger nacelles are held together on the inside. It's thruster damaged. Yeah, after this shift, we're going to need to repair our gear. I see one effect with the the damage on the cutter is that the temperature or the maximum temperature before it overheats uh, the bar in the lower right that is uh, filled in already somewhat but yeah since we are using the the beam cutter that isn't actually much of an effect that hasn't that doesn't actually have much of an effect on us That one. Okay. Give these a shove. Pull you free. Well, you already came free on your own. Uh, yeah, we send that one down. And this one goes that way. You push off as well. There. Oh, uh, yep, that, that's one of those movements that I was talking about. Like, I don't get what's causing those. Okay, let's take that off. And in you go. Yeah. The scanner will also need repairs eventually. So far, they, we haven't used this one much, so it doesn't need repairs at the moment. But, yeah, we've seen what happens <clears throat> when we get close to radiation with that. And I think that the more damaged the scanner becomes, the more distorted the vision gets on the base at the uh, overall. It'd be like we're constantly staring at a reactor. Oh, oh, uh, okay, I only know. <laughs> There's the freaking reactor. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought they weren't putting a reactor in this thing because it was meant for training. Uh, yeah, it does seem that they've put an entire uh, normal ship in here. Oh, that also pushed the nacelle free. You're an express Tether trip. Low. Oh, Tether. Not... I, for a moment I thought... I, <laughs> for a moment I thought I'd said oxygen. It was like, but we turned the freaking oxygen off. Okay. Reminds me, I saw a little bit of a lure ticket on the screen. No. I don't know what the where did it? There it go. Apparently, a full card is only in store. The professor is a name of a, a person. Okay. Apparently, his last name is Processor. <laughs> uh, he must have been quite a hit in the IT department. Yeah, if you look. Because if I remember, he was an EIL processor. I think that was its full name. Yeah, that's probably a pun. Most likely. But uh, yeah, this also shows that reactors can be in other spaces as well. They won't always be in the same location. Okay, yeah, so you go around, please. Now, in this case, it should still be a normal. Process a normal reactor, so if we mess with the fuel and electronics, it'll stay stable. On bigger reactors, that won't be the case. Uh, 
Okay, we're going to have to pull that thing off without hitting the reactor. So, let's put one there. And there, and peel this thing like an apple. And there we go. Like a, a, never an apples, how are you? Yeah, uh, banana would have been more accurate, but anyways, it's out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, now, now the reality of how stupid that is is sounding. Um... <laughs> maybe like Well, you can peel apples as well, but you need to cut them. And yeah, we're not cutting anything near that reactor. I'm trying to keep an eye on the audio levels in OBS. Like the, I might need to lower it a bit. If the, anyone is watching, uh, how is uh, how <clears throat> how uh, is the audio mixture? Like, am I being dr drowned out, or is is the music still too soft? Okay. Credit Stuck on something there as I try to move sideways. Okay. I'm still just ignoring the lamps on these because they're just worth so little in comparison. Yeah. Let's pull this one off and sorry it just to see how much they are worth. Salvage secured. Ah, yes. Credit applied. Cargo hatch, which is connected by these joint points. Oh no, was it hard points? No, hard points is worth. I'm, I'm blanking a bit on the exact terminology. Oh, oh, we don't want to send it into the processor. That's a parts item. Object accepted for processing. Okay. There you go. Downtown to go and down. Salvage secured. Okay. Credit deposited. Let's release the cockpit, and actually that that one still needs to be moved. Okay. Let's try and not cut the doors apart. There we go. Um, let's launch that down. To pull to slow its descent and nudge it to the other side. And in you go. Uh, what's a useful item? I think it's got some kind of a package with a cross on. You know, that's a repair kit or a healing kit. Valuable it's... object process. Credit awarded. It's still attached to a wall on the ship. Uh, that's that's Very a health kit, yeah. But we're at full health. The only real problem that we might have soon is fuel. And let's see. I th I think red lights means that the power is off. I didn't pay specific attention to it earlier when I removed the battery. But I th think I did see them change the color. Oh. Hello. Did I miss you? Is that the last? That is the last. We can move this away. There we go. Valuable <clears throat> Pardon. As usual, I'm coming to this shortly after dinner. Let's not forget that. Regulator. Two! Two! Salvage games upstairs. What? Oh, I forgot the hell I'm on screen. How did you forget to uh, uh, Yeah, we've been having. 
We've been having some annoyances with flies as well here. There's been a lot more to swap. Yeah, I want to have one. This is my first flight this year so far. And it's mostly left me alone. But I do have a. Remember, I have Victor and a full of war again. Okay, where did. A bit odd. Where did the brother of that uh, door go? Or was that one destroyed by the. <clears throat> By the decompression. Doesn't matter. Let's move that back. Okay, let's see if we can turn this thing a bit. Or are you way too heavy for us to move? Yeah, you're too heavy. Okay. This should still be easy enough. Don't use your hands and your knees. Too heavy. There we go. Yeah, I, I was thinking of just uh, turning, trying to turn this thing off around to face down, but oh well. Oh, great. Yeah, still pressurized. So what we do is we grab on. And what we do is... Oh, of course, there's no power to this. Okay, we're going to be a bit risky then. Yeah, let's get some distance. Nope. Uh, that did... Uh, I... I'm pretty sure it was supposed to go the exact opposite way. <laughs> Come on. Like, you think with all of the air being expelled, it's shoot off like a rocket the other way. Yeah. Did you just lose it? Uh, oh, oh, crap. No oh, fuck. Well, we might... We might lose it now if we can't get back here quick enough to get more tethers. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay. Tethers. Okay, let's fix that. Just in case. And yeah, all of that. <laughs> All of that is down the trash. <laughs> I just see what the, what the other fuck. <laughs> what the other hell? The... I, mean, I knew something would go wrong, but that was not what I expected. <laughs> it, it took off like a reverse fuck, uh, like a fucking reverse rocket. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna. That's probably the best way to describe it. Now, again, we... If our... It was, <clears throat> logically, it's... You'd think it would... No, that... That yeah, was meant for the process, but oh well. Logically, you'd, you'd think... Like, the air comes out, so it shoots the other way. No, instead that thing comes for us like it's got a fucking vendetta. <laughs> Wait, but where did it go? Uh, it launched against the edge there and it landed himself inside the suction zone of the furnace. Uh, <laughs> inside the furnace now. Yeah, that's that big red bar in the upper, uh, in the measuring bar. <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> like I, I'm no space expert. I, I'm pretty sure it should have gone the other side. And uh, yeah, that also shows why you want to work on decompression. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, that is a lot of stuff that got destroyed there. Uh, if if I hadn't moved aside, that thing would have that thing would have smashed us against the back of the bar of the work zone. 
I think we all, all out killed you. Yeah, it <laughs> it would have it was nope. Hey there, Rook. So we were got busy and asked me to review your salvage records today. Um, I saw that you snagged an old data drive in that ship. Look, I know that the networks on Earth don't really give you the full picture about what's happening across the colonies. Don't want you all getting a read on what's actually going on off Earth. These data drives, though, they're uncensored info, and they'll give you the full view. Sometimes it's useless junk, you know, someone's recipes or bad photos flexing in front of the mirror. Other times it's a corporate rail mail for a ship captain's personal log. Anyway, don't tell Weaver this, but I'm sending you some software to extract the usable data off these things. You'll see a new data recovery mode in your HAB terminal. Soaking in solar radiation tends to mangle most of the data, but you should be able to pull a couple of intact files off each drive. Hopefully, it'll give you a better sense of the wider world. Boards <laughs> and all. Have fun with it. Later, Rook. Okay, a bit more... I, I do have to say, I like it when voice actors improvise a bit on things. It gives it more personal flair. Uh, but yeah, yeah we'll, we'll start finding these things as well. I have, to, I have to say, if the developers were to view this, maybe push things a bit further to the front. Uh, of course, you don't want to overwhelm players getting new to this, but the first few ranks do feel a bit empty with all of this. But it's your people's game, so your choice. Just uh, the two cents of a Dutch guy who doesn't know a thing about game design. Or how to decompressionize a rocket. <laughs> I'm, go cool. I'm, going to, I'm going to clip that out and show it to Liara. I, I don't think you two have met. I'm sure. Uh, you mentioned it once before. And yeah, with Liara, I'm of course not meaning the Mass Effect Liara, but someone who has taken up the name uh, as their uh, nickname and such. Just to uh, make it 100% sure for some people who may be watching. I think I heard the name Liara in many movies and games, so I did not know that was a funny Mass Effect myself. Okay, let's fix so our thrusters as well. Uh, oh, can't do. You apparently not the people to land safely. Let's see. Bigger range for the stinger. Tether or not? Hmm? Oh, what's wrong with the game? <laughs> Did you think you got a dentist? As <laughs> Did you think you suddenly got a dentist as a neighbor or something? No, no. I, th I thought I heard the Discord disconnect sound. Okay. It made me a bit confused and wonder, wait, they're just dis uh, disconnected or something here, but I'm still here, so that's probably the game. And, uh, wait, but where did this uh, dentist come from? No, it, because you <laughs> you reacted when it was a, a drill sound from the game. That was a drill sound? I heard something that sounded more like a disco disconnect. Are we finally going to get the fancy grabbers with these? Well, let's see. The Conway. What's a Conway again? I think it. Uh, finally, the arms are on. Um, I don't know Conway in other any other way other than a name. Okay. But yeah, it seems that we're finally getting the full versions of these things with the utility arms, communications arrays, and solar sails. And oh, that's enough. Okay, so that one is retracted. Or, no, I don't see a way to really move those other than up and down. Okay, so yeah, those are just going to be stationary. Now, let's see, do we have to... Oh, we can we can pull you free just like that. Okay, not not even a terminal connection. Okay. Okay, down you go. Don't hit the rim. So that would be the most expensive game of basketball ever. 
Salvage secured. Okay, Credit this thing is completely deposit. empty of air. Airlock pressure so it's just drop. a case of opening the doors. Thanks for the mental image of a most expensive bicycle ball ever. So much gold and jewelry. Okay, nothing is pressurized, so we're completely safe here. Actually, I, I wouldn't be surprised if someone has made it. The most expensive ball, expensive plastic ball ever. And if I were to see a video of it, I'd probably die inside. <laughs> uh, a lot of boxes again. And really bright lights. Okay. Okay, this tune sounds a lot like one of the Mass Effect uh, sound, and that specific tune sounded a lot like one of the thing ones you come across in. Well, this place is pretty full in Mass Effect, and here's a data drive. Oh, this game is used to many. During the wake of the AI revolution, that the Stellar Commission found the grit we deserved from them for so long. It is here where we can chalk up a clear win. Advanced AI systems were on the rise, decimating work opportunities for hundreds of millions across the solar system, and causing unimaginable human suffering. Of course, large corporations, as always, had nothing more in mind than profit, and were further spurred by their public image as the drivers of human advancement. However, finally finding their voice and the right tools to enact and enforce policy, the Stellar Commission, in an enormous pushback against corporate power, outlined new regulations around artificial intelligence, practically outlawing its use in order to safeguard human jobs. Better late than never, am I right? The corporate conglomerates have had simmering resentment ever since this moment of heavy regulation and strict enforcement. Today they are looking towards the Jupiter frontier, where once again, the Commission's reach and oversight is sparse. And so the cycle repeats. As a species, our greatest flaw seems to be to never learn from history, and that there's some among us who would gladly grind their fellow humans into a pulp for a dollar. It appears we are doomed to repeat the mistakes of our past, time and time again. That didn't specifically sound human to me. Like, that was a very robotic uh, delivery. Android? Uh, I th Android, maybe? Uh, we don't know how far uh, certain tech goes in this. Uh, okay, there's an antenna on the, underneath this. I hadn't noticed that. Uh, let's give this thing a bit more of a shove. Okay, let's cut you free. But I did say the store of uh, can mangle the files, so... Yeah, it could be data degeneration that damaged the sound of it. Salvage secured. Okay, Account I was not expecting applied. these at all. Uh, okay, you guys are long, boys. Okay, this is, yeah, some sort of exploratory vessel in the past. Okay, let's pull you off. Long boy? That's not a long boy. No, no. No, not a long boy. No. And then what is a long boy? Please, your Taurus. Not that That's way, you... Angels. Okay. And yes, I, I'm still stuck with that chunky boy thing in my head. Face <laughs> a Red Scott Gaming, which you showed me. <laughs> okay. Damn so, you. With that, with that panel loose, we can safely, somewhat safely at least, move this around and thus move the reactor around. So 
let's move that back a bit and give it a clear pass. I'm hoping expecting more accidents now. So what just happened a moment ago. And away it goes. Let's analyze what happened. You made the front part of the ship rocket away backwards. <laughs> yeah. Then, in panic, you hurl yourself face first into the shopping panel. <laughs> to buy peppers. I, I think in part that was because of the damage to the thrusters, because I'm pretty sure I should have been breaking a lot more than that. Okay. Salvage deposit accepted. Credits transferred. Let's see. Oh. I almost forgot to add to extra salt to the injury. You have the front part of the chip rocket into the furnace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. If that isn't a highlight, I I don't know what is. Okay, amplifiers. Okay, I think we can cut these three just here, and both parts should count. If we just throw it down like this. Okay, be a bit stubborn in how it's moving. But then again, this is heavy. And we forgot to see how much that single lamp that we threw in was worth. Oh, yeah. It's processed secured. amplifier. And high gain antenna. Okay, so yeah. I should remember to not speak with my mouth full. I wish I could even watch the Hearable on the. It's hearable a word. Audible. Audible, that's the one. Audible for the mic. And I'm pretty sure that's also like a service or a company or something. There you go. Oh, another one of those. Credits transferred. Many YouTubers have been doing uh, work with Audible. Okay, so it is a company. Yep. That make, uh, well, you know, audiobooks. Ah, that one. Okay. And, then, and therefore you can see why many YouTubers accept them. Or, well, if the business is going to Google, they, they're not, they just only ask you to tell them about your company. Not to, yeah, you know, review too much, uh, too much of that. Yes. Talk about them soon enough. On um, that, I could somewhat agree, but with a lot of those, uh, they are well, talking in it in such a way that it's clearly basically meant to suck their dick. Yeah, but though, many people get the, a discount if they write in the YouTube with maybe. True. So, and some of the profit when they use the YouTuber's name goes to the YouTuber. Account credit okay, I might look into it more, but with pretty much every uh, <clears throat> every advertisement that people are that uh, YouTubers and such run for sponsorships make me immediately suspicious on if they are actually uh, advert. <clears throat> actually, if they actually like it, or if they are, if that's just in the freaking script. Like, if you do not tell this or if uh, that, uh, you will not get, uh, yeah, your share. Basically, like uh, Ray Channeland. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that was, I want you to take it positive from them, since they may, may not have been needing money. But you can see the that they, they are not fan of it themselves. But uh, I think the, I think Captain Salt made it best. For he took it a step further than everyone else. Yeah, what did he do then? Sponsorship Turkey. <laughs> okay. 
he he made a, in all the ego of himself it's only a, a appearing a video dressed up as a turkey <laughs> with yes. all of us uh, yeah certainly though i from what i've been hearing uh, sp sponsors like that have been yeah growing wise to people not you know, finding ways around having to just praise the hell out of them and such and that that that's in part of why i uh, dislike those sponsorships and people taking them is that it sounds it's personally to me it sounds so fake and dishonest yeah so some of the youtubers i have seen actually try the pro product first before they review it uh, uh, look and ad for sponsors is correct or me some youtubers who won't have to sell food chips so they they buy the product they stop themselves and they say yeah every sponsor is really need a good product or this product is horrible i will not i will not take that sponsorship from you something like that yeah, there's, I forget their name, but there is someone uh, that I've been viewing a lot, and yeah, it says a lot about my memory that I do not remember their freaking names. Uh, but they've been doing anti-sponsorships, where they don't actually name the people who've tried to sponsor them. Uh, but they do go over all of the bullshit that they've pulled, and like just uh, throwing offerings to them. And then just completely going silent and all of that stupid stuff. Okay. Yeah. Oh, tell one thing about great channel like that I actually heard about from a YouTuber that keeps denying saying no to them. That there's another company that owns uh, the company that makes great channel like that. Yeah. And that company is one of the world's biggest casino companies. Uh, of course. And then it makes sense when they want to use great child product as a legal form of gambling for kids. As a new form. Yeah, I, I gave it a look at some point. And yeah, it. Let's just say the, the, pri the, the price of things. That I saw in there for like at one point early on, they basically force you to equip something onto a character, and the only way to get rid of the, to remove that is by paying. So if you would, you would eventually find something better to equip there, anyways. Uh, yeah, the cost to remove that was just fucking astronomical, like a hundred thousand gold. Why are they still in business? I don't know. Sure, and I want that the models animation and all that. They have made the game pretty. But if you're gonna do that, then you basically make the game pretty on the outside and ugly on the inside. It's because they've played to people's uh, you know, vulnerabilities to getting addicted. And that you know, you've probably heard of whales in mobile gaming and such people who spend like thousands a week on on mobile games yeah i heard sometimes the term base for online games uh like uh warcraft and such or more games that they have they are very heavy on catch up but yeah i would be surprised the way this moved over to mobile as well uh yeah that, typically when people talk of whales they talk or when media and such talk about whales they talk like it, it is rich people who can afford to do that, that. but often it's people who have uh, addictive personality uh, traits that basically they get addicted to things easily and yeah they they a lot of them just can't afford that but because the games trick them into getting addicted yeah, they spend money that they a lot of the times need for themselves, for food, housing and such. And yeah, Raid is very likely has a lot of whales in that it's meant to lure in. And that is why it's still going on. Even though, if you ask me, it should have died in its first year. Yeah. Because it, it has enough, it has nice graphics, it's pro possibly the best graphics in mobile at the moment. But it's it's just skin deep. It's only graphics. The mechanics, what from what I've seen, uh, yeah, there there are practically no mechanics. 
It, yeah. it's, it's plain freaking boring. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I was just playing graphics, but I saw the game and I felt like... Ready? Salvage deposit accepted. Ready? Transferring. Is it? Yep. Yeah, I get the feeling that we might... Salvage secure. Actually, we need nine. No credit applied. Okay, it may, it may be not be this ship here with which we reach the rank 7. Wait, I just realized, when the YouTube is that right, the handle, we cannot even delete the uh, Usually, um, we have a piece of small cap in home. See? It makes me wonder if... Yeah, yeah, especially with Captain Toss that the podcast was a bit more built for like, you know, we were doing a sponsor for a ship game. And probably thinking about that, that is not working. And yeah, from what I've heard, the companies have been getting better at figuring out or recognizing when uh, the people they are sponsoring are being sarcastic. Uh, or with uh, their sponsorships, which is why their script has been so so freaking obvious. Yeah, it's basically it's read these, it'll read the script, nothing else, just the script, and then we pay you. Yeah, I think they are probably still talking about water, or some YouTubers have repeatedly said no. Repeatedly tell them, tell them, I emails them, no, I don't want to sponsor the, the sponsorship with you. And they keep sending them. Yeah, at some point that starts counting as harassment. Yeah. So they themselves are the hot walkers. Yeah, it could also be that, um, yeah, it could just be bad personnel. Uh, this thing is still attached. Or that they just go through so many that they have so many of those advertisement people uh, that they they work with uh, yeah, that they just they just don't update the lists of these people don't want to work with us and such and that, that means that every time a new uh, PR person get goes through the list that they go over the old ones as well again and again and again yeah But yeah, in, gen in general, just Raid is a shit game and it's made by a shit company. Yeah, and that shit company is actually the side co sister company to a one damn big casino. Which yeah. makes sense then. I, I think that's casino in, in, in Brazil in Las Vegas. Can you just match this thing down? So it makes sense that they really down yeah. the aspect into the game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, long story short, avoid raid Le Shadow Legends. Okay. Could have gone a shorter way, but well, and we still need to remove those two. I don't think those electrical cells should be much of a problem. Uh, not even with them being on top of the cabling. Uh, I say that and something goes wrong. Did I, did I, I accidentally cut the cabling. I was just the thing. I was going to rub wrong soon. Yeah, back. Electrical damage. Electrical damage has been found to negatively impact long-term health. And yeah, if you get shocked. <laughs> Then the radio starts malfunctioning as well. <laughs> okay then, uh, yeah, I think we, I think I accidentally cut the cabling, which caused all of that. Yeah, we are putting a lot on you. Yeah. Uh, I didn't think we'd get shocked by that one. It didn't seem to be sparking too much. Like it had. It having the blue glow over it means that it's electrically active, yeah, but it shouldn't have sparked us. 
Okay, let's just pull all of you out. So a lot of... Well, there's also a lot of electrical uh, <coughs> equipment in this thing, so it makes sense to have this many power cells. Okay, that should have cut off all of the power. Unsure. Not... Okay, not... I'm guessing this means that it is cut off, and that it's just uh, an emergency feature in these things that they can still open uh, even when the power is out, because, well, it, otherwise uh, people would get trapped in areas. Material yeah. Okay. Let's pull you out. I'm going to let these float around a bit longer. Just pull them all free until I've pushed away the sides. You know what? I could just bring them out through here, but it'll be easier to just have all of this move at once. Yeah, a bit of a late response with this, but I did. I like that that uh, audio log that we found told a bit more about that uh, AI revolution. Yeah, gives a bit more depth of uh, the world, corporate universe in this case. Yeah, because there, yeah, there was talk of a, an AI ban before. Yeah, automation taking away people's jobs. That yeah, that's often a thing with uh, science fiction. Did I? Am I stuck? Okay, slipped out. So I was <laughs> I was up against this bit here. Okay, let's continue pulling this place free. Are you going to shock me or not? The light is off, so it shouldn't be as dangerous. The game didn't decide to be an ass there to me. What is that... What is that cut point there? Now I remember the, the name. Oh. It's the one that kept... Well, the antennas to it and such. The, the, the utility arms. Uh, the, why can I move... Not move this then? It's wedged in some. Hmm. Or wait, is it being held to the. Let's pull these loose quick. There, it, it was being held to the rest of the frame by the beds. When you tell me it was held hostage by beds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now okay. I heard everything. Down you go. Confirm as you go. That sounds horrible. It's like we had hosted by couch potatoes. Three pack, those there. Uh, yeah. Map, old mattresses, uh, yeah, of course you don't want those to resell. You want to burn those and whatever might have survived in them to an absolute crisp. Well, this thing did have atmosphere. <laughs> and spores of different things can stay alive for a very long time. What is that? It's one of the power cells that we pulled free. Yeah. <laughs> the cutter will only cut what we point at. Between the dots, even. I know. But you have already blown up another ship. And shocked yourself. And crushed yourself. Shut. Stun. So forgive me if I'm a bit doubtful over your skills at the moment. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, plucking this thing should be easy enough. Salvage secured. Actually, Let's completely twist our arm around. Okay. Everything towards the door. As long as not too many things are rubbing together, this should still work without getting us killed. Um. Okay, the only dangerous thing here is the power junction, and now with everything loose. Hello. Personal terminal. I will wait with you. Okay. Now we just grab on. That's somewhere where we have a good line of sight on the barge. Come on. <laughs> How are we moving the entire cockpit like that? Maybe it would have been a better idea to just... <laughs> uh, wait. Okay, it wasn't the cockpit that we moved, it's actually this part. I think. <laughs> okay, how did we pull that off then? I didn't mean to go up. Well, I can answer you how you did it. Wait, no, it's not gravity. It's not gravity. Nope. Uh, the, the fist, as we saw with the cockpit, the physics can be a bit wonky at times because, again, I'm pretty sure that thing should have gone forwards. Uh, okay, you're already loose. Okay. Uh, we still have plenty of feathers. Go. Warning. Fuel levels are low. Okay, I think I saw a fuel can in here. Account credit applied. Uh, it's a damaged one. Is it damaged? Yes, it is. Which means that we are not touching them. Okay, so some of the blue glow is from the grappler itself, not from electricity. Because if that was electricity, that would have blown up in our face. Oh, God. Thank you. Oh, no this one is not fixed. Hmm? Uh, this. Uh, as someone on the thumbnail, uh, you know, what's a video of, of uh, Australia that they speak very good Swedish? Okay. And one of his thumbnails, he apparently talked with some uh, friends of his in Australia. And, uh, yeah, get ready for this uh, thumbnail text. Sweden? Ain't that the capital of Germany? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I'm used to hear that from um, Americans and uh, some people familiar about. Good gods! Uh, could have been that he was pulling their leg as well. Uh, Come on, break. I, I, I really hope you boss. I may see, see if I can watch the video later. And I just hope it was. Where? Oh, right. Cabling is keeping it together. Yep. Off you go. Another. I think that. I think those sweeping motions might be bad because the game is lagging for like a split second and over recognizing the input, perhaps. I don't know for sure, but yeah, Hope, hopefully something they'll be able to fix in time, if it is with the game and not with my computer. I still need to remove well, that one. It is an early access game so far, so... True. There will always still be bugs. Okay. 
think we can pull the entirety of this half off on its own. Oh, hello. Salvage secured. Credit deposited. So you grab this one. And yeah, I see nothing that should connect this thing to the mainframe. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. Nether supplies are low. Oh, oh, it's it's pulling the entire thing. Um, where are you still attached? Okay, what is what is still keeping all of this connected to the mainframe? Is it the cabling somewhere? Or would that be the airlock? Processing valuable object. Okay, cutting the cabling anyways. Uh, yeah, that has moved the entire half of this quite a bit. Okay. Now the rest should... Let's put things at a bit of an odd angle. Are you still attached? Okay, what? How are you still connected to the mainframe? It, okay, it was the cabling. But it wasn't making contact with it. Uh, but the, yeah, the, the physics are a bit wonky still. There's things that aren't making contact are somehow still connected. Okay. And yeah, the rest of this just goes to the furnace. Three is typically Cabin enough. Depleted. Still that one. Uh, let's finish clearing out the cockpit first. Salvage secured. Credit deposited. Hmm? I'm saying something can. He says, I want to have me a thing. I was up. I told you I spoke to my cat that woman. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. Okay. Don't pay the EMP. <laughs> yeah, she's not around. Good. I think she would be offended. Oh, oh. Yeah, it's damaged. Yeah, that is the amount of sparking that we need to be careful of. Yeah. Look at the shock. Uh, that shows how, van how vulnerable some things can be. Like, some will get damaged just from being removed. Come on, please. Don't play with beer. I said, my beer today. Okay. Even though it said 0.4, I'm not sure how that's out of the beer. Not the game of it. Both it to actually. Salvage deposit accepted. Sort of trying to finish recipe from a Finnish friend. So I actually bought for the first time reindeer meat and then they cooked it in the dark alcohol free beer. Okay. And I shared uh, the rest of the bottle with my mother and my old Sambo. And I got to drink the one third of what's remaining. And something, but I didn't faint, luckily enough, which happens with my medicine otherwise. It was uh, to a high alcohol content on it. Instead, I started burping and tasting beer all the time. Okay. I think I heard that, that that is normal up here, I I can't comment on that. And for some reason, these parts of the shell are still attached. Again, it might... It, something is keeping them attached, even though they shouldn't be. Okay. Secured. Is it because it's a different shape that it is just one solid piece? Could be. But then yep. why were the cut pieces here? The cut points. Or wait, 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 I think I know. 
Yes, it's the front brace that's keeping it together. There are several... Those are speed bumps, aren't they? It's the, basically just like the cow catchers we've discussed in a previous video on this. I'm still imagining space cows. Okay, now... Yeah, now they are loose. Uh, oh, yeah, those are loose, yeah. But you have some main cuts. Uh, this part, it goes into the processor as well, so we can just chuck it in along with the rest. But at the moment, it's too heavy for us to move. So we pull that away. Um. And yeah, now all of this can go into the processor, even though there is a lot of furnace stuff in there. Can we even move it like this? No, we don't have any effect on it. Okay. That means that we need a few tethers to get that moving. Well, we needed those anyways to move that part as well. And there we go. Uh, okay, that must be part that we... I, I thought most of it would have stuck together. The, the front end. Or the cow catcher, as I keep calling it, because I don't... I think it would technically count as a bumper. Yeah. Oh wait, yeah, I mean, on course it's a bumper. On a train it's a, car, a cow catcher. Yeah. Probably yeah. do too. Yeah, I, I imagine in old days trains accidentally ran over a few cows. Yeah, I think it's from the Wild West in the... the <clears throat> the era where trains were becoming a common thing, it, it would be probably that cows would start roaming onto the tracks. Yeah, well, was that specifically in the Wild West, or it could have that could have started in Europe as well? Yeah, I think it was in the Wild West, where... Yeah, I think it was Wild West. Yeah, that's where well, you see them from... depicted most often. Yeah, and I think it was even there it was invented. Before it went to Europe. Okay, one more ship like that, and we should be to rank seven. Okay, we got we got almost five million out of that thing. And that's wait, oh, that's probably the <clears throat> the newspaper again. Okay, yeah, the, the selection with this is a bit odd at times. But there it went immediately back to the bottom. Yeah, contract clauses. In this issue, we would like to address our demand of... <clears throat> Pardon? Of revising the shipbreaker contracts. Did you know that the company owns any and all intellectual property for any inventions or artistic creations made by their workers? That's right, you've signed away that you know, right the moment you took the, on this job forever. Were you aware that by signing the contract you agreed to not have any body modifications done, such as piercings, tattoos, or contraceptive devices without company approval? Are you aware that the company has free reign over when to terminate you to cook a new spare from the system, and that there are no regulations or provisions in place for when that should occur? They can literally do it for any reason. Or that the continued use of a dysfunctional spare is purely at the discretion of the company. Not to mention the policy on toilet breaks being a whopping 28 pages long. <laughs> These and more aspects of the Link Shipbreaker contract are inhumane and in desperate need of regulation for the dignity of our workers. Service Workers Unite is determined to have these shortcomings addressed by regulation from the Stellar Commission. What the heck? Yeah, so basically, they they could just kill you and replace you with a more uh, willing spare at any point. 
And yeah, this is continued use of a dysfunctional spare, basically crippling you so you will stay in that you won't be able to work off your debts like Weaver. So yeah, that at their choice they can basically if by chance you become crippled or otherwise less capable of the job, at that point they can choose to keep you like that and keep you as a slave. If no well, more than more than a slave than before, even because now you have absolutely no chance of ever working off the debt. I mean, everyone is a slave under them. Yep. Let's go. Well. Data recovery. This will probably be the audio log that we listen to, and maybe one or two extras. Or actually, no. Or is this select mission two or three? Historian. Oh yeah, we also get, this is also a nice little thing that they give you a text of this, what is spoken as well. In case you don't want, to, if you, in case you want to glance through it or such. Uh, yeah, and so now we learn from the history, yeah, is this like links and all the companies actively try to hide history from their workers? Yeah. Okay, let's get the up <coughs> the objects mode. This should help us identify. Uh, and, well, this should help us spot uh, stuff that is useful. Let's get my juicer. Okay, just for that, we're getting that. Um, Okay, I didn't actually read what that said, but it probably said uh, for cleaning up this or something. Fun fact, home teams are not covered in Link's uh, insurance. Yeah, we're not getting access to ghost ships just yet as well, it seems. They're, they'll probably put those, they'll probably start with those on the st story as well. Uh, maybe in the next rank. Salvage secured. I hope the ghost ship will have ghosts. I won't give spoilers on that yet, but it isn't too big of a thing. Now let's see, this thing is this thing is pressurized. Airlock pressure levels dropping. Let's see. Big in the cell can only be removed from the inside. And let's see. Engine room and side compartments, side and the <coughs> cockpit are pressurized. Okay, let's leave that on and start plucking some things out of this thing. And yeah, there's a lot more chairs in these things. Wrong button. Let's actually is the uh, mouse wheel switches. Yeah, this shows us the stuff. And yeah, there's the reactor in there. We're not going to beeline for that thing just yet. First, let's move a bunch of stuff out of these. Okay, grab you to slow you down. Because we're going to need to decompress the cockpit. And if there's anything loose in there, it could go flying around in this area here and damage other things. And if it hits anything electrical, it could start a chain reaction. Yeah, this time, Helion, be extra careful. That tune again, that, that sounds very Mass Effect-like. And again, we say, I think they got a lot of uh, typical sci-fi music inspiration here. Oh, yeah. But most of the music we're hearing sounds like music I have heard somewhere before. It, not that it's bad, the music is nice, but it doesn't feel new either. Actually, we... Yeah, we can beeline for the reactor. 
Because we can look over <laughs> underneath the door like this. But I'm surprised that that thing is not a weapon. It could very much be used like one if the safeties are off. Safeties are Have you seen what it does to metal? Yeah, what I mean is that <clears throat> it obviously has some sort of scanner in it because it it won't even it won't even no it will activate but it won't continue on if we aim it at something that it can't cut. So it could be as worked in as well that if it's aimed at some at uh, a person that it also doesn't fire or at least doesn't keep on firing. What the heck is going on? Yeah, there was the notification that the grappler is being damaged. It has been damaged past a certain threshold again. Oh no. Okay. One reactor. One barge. Yeah, those reactors will spark you will start sparking as well so that is why you want to get rid of it asap okay. we don't want to remove too much weight from this thing yet but we can remove all of the loose or re retractable pieces in here so yeah let's cling to the wall like a cheap Spider-Man. And we start throwing. Well, it did cost us like a freaking billion to get in here, so we aren't that cheap. Entertainment terminals, probably mostly playing advertisements. Junction box. The, the junction box still has power, so I, I don't want to just pull it out like that. Um, in case it might get hit by anything flying out of there. So. Wait. Is there no entrance? There's no entryway to the, the crawl space. Okay, so we are going to have to decompressorize that. I think I saw something. Hmm? I think I saw one of your screws and bolts. Yeah, there's a bunch of those flying around. Let's go for that. Okay, we're going to have to open up the cockpit. And before we do, get rid of these last soft crates. There's a lot of junk in here that can bounce off of something. Okay. Enough dancing around. Come on. And there we go. Wait, what? I... I thought that thing... That was pressurized still, wasn't it? Uh, wait, what just happened? I'm, I'm pretty sure when we looked around earlier that this was still marked as pressurized. But, <laughs> well, apparently not. Okay, any new recordings? No, just text data. <laughs> well, that saved us uh, one problem. And then we can put the object mode of this to use. Okay. We have a fuel cell there. The airlock there. Okay, power cell there. We don't want to cut through there then. 
Okay. Actually, I think I think there is enough weight for us to separate these two outlet. Actually, no, that could that could send <clears throat> that could send the cockpit flying again. Please don't do that. What are you stuck on? Nothing, apparently. Okay, I'm mostly just removing this in case uh, a lot of things start moving when I pop open the sides. It's, if, we, <clears throat> if we cut those four points now, then yeah, both of these are going to, both sides are going to decompress at once. So let's try and pop only one. Let's get somewhere where we... Yeah, it's probably a bit too close. Here. What is that? And that was all of the air escaping. As you can see, some stuff, well, nothing big got pulled through it, and all of the, yeah, all of the big things were secure enough to have survived that. But a lot of the junk might now be collected at that cut. And now for the other side, it just <laughs> okay. Maybe this is a ghost ship after all. Apparently, we we can. <laughs> Our arm is a ghost. And wait, did both sides? Okay, apparently that cut in one side decompressed both sides. What? Huh? Yeah, it's early access weirdness. Okay. Back to work. Cuts are a bit rough with some, some extra material hits, but it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, once the reactor is out, most of these small uh, ships are easy enough. And we haven't seen... I don't think we've actually seen one of the new ship... The, yeah, that new ship type uh, that was really... That we unlocked. I don't think that has shown up uh, in the our selection yet. Salvage secured. Okay. Account credit applied. Okay. All of the cutting points are in the main section are free or are gone. So now we can see about wiggling the <coughs> the body and the and the cockpit apart from each other and there we go yeah otherwise that probably would have needed tethers to pull these two or three was another screw <laughs> there was a screw tapping off <clears throat> tapping against uh, our visor not only only tapping and not being breathing right through your skull yeah, technically we would be at risk of micro meteors in this place though they'd have to get past quite a bit to even get here well, depends. How many other areas yes, they can come through? Fuck me. Being a 
bit surprised, I don't know, doing the, these kind of things inside a ship for more secure location. Hopefully it can help order if this is not more a more unstable way to descend on a ship. Uh, well, the thing with this is that <clears throat> a lot of these ships have these explosive hazards and such, and you, you want those to be rather out in the open uh, instead of in a ship where they could well, damage other things. Point taken, yeah, I was thinking of that. But that's definitely the only thing for much else. Like, as quick as you remove them, it's no the same thing. You should be able to move the rest for regular disassemble. Okay, move you. I'm gonna. Go. Now all of these should come off. Okay, give you a bit of extra nudging. Okay. You go after that. And you go down. And you as well. Salvage secured. Credits deposited. Don't even need to give that a shove. Or chips. <laughs> Be right back. Grab my sandwich. Okay. Low on fuel. Button that was turning, not going down. Valuable object process. Credits okay. You get away from the furnace. thing is peeling apart like it should. Valuable object process. Up. Okay, if you're going to be a bit difficult. There. Uh, oh, hello. I should check the back of these things more often. Salvage secured. Nope. Account credit. Applied. Another one. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Hit my head. Wait, did we just. Okay, what moved there? Okay, that was. We, <laughs> we act. We pulled the main frame a bit around us with that, I think. Salvage secured. Credits deposited. Processing okay. valuable objects. Technically, it's almost not even worth it to pull this switch to get this piece loose, but oh well. There we go. You. Take a nosedive. And then this goes there. Salvage deposit accepted. Credits transferred. Hopefully this isn't drifting, because this side is getting a bit close to the furnace. So let's quickly cut through here. Before it all drifts too close. That is very close. We need good shove. Okay, hello there. And yeah, I notice it now. The red, the light switched to red. Okay, how did your tether break? Welcome back. Hmm? You haven't died yet. Nope. 
and there we go. Warning. Tethers depleted. One spaceman appealed. Valuable object process. Credit awarded. Okay, break. And there we go. Fuel and tethers. Okay, now we just need to work the cockpit as usual. And all of that can go into there. Okay, what have we in here? Just the usual. Might have bounced into something. Salvage secured. Credit deposited. Okay, nothing is damaged Salvage at least. Deposit accepted. These boxes can take quite a beating. Actually, I don't think they have any health at all, so basically they're invincible. See, I'm not seeing any lights on that. Okay, let's not hold it too close to ourselves either way. Salvage secured. Credit deposited. Ah, okay, that was the notification that we have. If we've gotten enough certification points to get uh, our rank up. Salvage deposit accepted. Nice. Credit transferred. Thank you. And yeah, we still have time left. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. So we can we can see what is next up and possibly give it a shot. Salvage secured. And credit that deposit. should be the last piece. Check. Yep. And off you go. We get our tethers refreshed at the next shift anyways, so we can waste any, whatever we have left. Processing valuable objects. Credits awarded. Shift salvage in Credits applied. Okay. Plus, oh, if we'd lost something big, we would have missed out on our third milestone with that, but we didn't. See, it's almost three million. New certification level achieved. And now Life we have apprentice upgraded. level. Okay. <coughs> Pardon again. Seems I'm having to deal with a little phlegm or some or slime in my throat. Need a feather back? <clears throat> I don't think you could reach that far. Let's see. Well, I can pat the back of your brain at least. A grapple and a suit upgrade available now. So let's have a look. He's still slowly but surely carving away at this. And. Mom and Pop to Megacorp, I found that very doubtful. Today, every ship traveling to every colony in the solar system does so thanks to Lynx Corp. Imagining our planet spanning civilization without Lynx and the business and technology acumen of its operators, the Paulson family, is inconceivable. Here is the journey of how the Paulson family turned a modest pop and shop recycling shop into the behemoth of progression and innovation we know today. Centuries ago, humanity decided to leave Earth for a better, brighter future, venturing into the outer worlds for new opportunities. In a matter of years, prominent companies like Martel Industries set up shop in the uncharted territories on and around Mars. In 2088, back on Earth, an ecologically minded core a couple, Kip and Goethe Schlanger, became <coughs> Began a small and unassuming company recycling debris from the dangerous Kessler belt, Link Salvage. 
Their goal was to clear and recycle the deadly debris so that more people could safely reach orbit. The Slangers ran Lynx Corp for 34 years, expanding into shipwrecking and growing the company's size at a steady rate. Over the next 100 years, ownership of the company was passed down through the family. In 2204, Kip and Bertha's great great grandson, Jonas Slanger, became CEO. Jonas ran the company without much interest or promise. Four short years later, industrialist, philanthropist, and great inventor Exeter Paulson saw opportunity in the modest company. It was time for it to be placed in the right hands. So after a brief negotiation period, Exeter took over the operation in 2208. Combining all of his holdings and interest into one company, Exeter rebranded Lynx to Lynx uh, Corporation, Lynx Elvis to Lynx Corporation in 2210. Overnight, the number humble, homely, earthbound business transformed up the prosperity solar mega uh, into the uh, prosperity solar mega corp it is today. Hmm. Basically, there might have been a good time they were a good company until that happened. Yeah. If <clears throat> like mom and pop stores still are still around these days and everywhere, uh, but eventually they, if they get too big, they start getting noticed by the big fish who then buy them up and such. So I get the feeling that that is I get the feeling that's probably what actually happened here. Uh, actually, here's the thing I don't understand. Can someone buy you up against your will? Uh, yeah, the companies can go undergo a hostile takeover, uh, with one party uh, getting over fifty percent of the shares in the company. At that point, uh, they have a they have complete say in what happens because they own over half of the company, and that means that they get well. Let's put it this way. You have one company and it has 100 shares on the market. Uh, every one of those shares is worth, uh, say, one vote in, make, <clears throat> in making decisions for the company. So, yeah, anyone who would have 51 shares and does 51 votes, they would, yeah, they, they have an overwhelming majority. Or not an over, they'd have a majority and just. Uh, they'd get to decide anything that would go because they'd have to say they'd have to agree to anything that would be vote have to be voted on. Okay. Because that also means there's a limit to where they can off your up and right just buy out someone. Uh, it, it depends because they'd have to buy those shares from other shareholders. And yeah, most people would those people would probably be offered and ask very high prices. All right, but, uh, but again, yeah, that was the wish that they just won't work. Like, if that's a company without shareholders, again, that usually for be a very small company that don't need shareholders, they would kind of get the bought off, I guess. Uh, yeah, those those be uh, those would be off the stock market, I think. I, I'm not an economist. And a lot of the modern economy stuff, or at least with shares and stocks, all sounds like a lot of bullshit that uh, a lot of money is invest is put into, but isn't actually much more than hot air. Like, uh, look at the GameStop sort of uh, stuff. The, the share price of that is now up, has gone up astronomically because of that uh, Reddit group. I forget the exact name of them. Market Star Wall Street Bets, I think. Uh, bas basically, they bought up hundreds of upon hundreds of sh uh, shares or, or stocks. I, for, I don't know if there's a difference. I don't really care if there's a difference. Basically, they drove up the price of the stocks astronomically, uh, and still the company made a loss in profits. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter if a stock has a, a high price or not. The company behind it could still be failing. Ah, okay. And that is why yeah. a lot, it just sounds like a load of hot air for me. And we have 18 repair kits. Might as well use them. Uh, okay, we don't have, we are, we won't be getting the demo charges until rank 11. Let's see. Right, didn't we unlock something new here? 
I, this was already unlocked. I'm pretty sure it said that one new work suit upgrade was unlocked, but it doesn't seem to be. And we haven't gotten that one yet, so might as well. Let's see, cutter, split saw, range. That is, that is useful. Gotten all of those. Thruster, top speed. Uh, top speed isn't really too important, I'd say, since you can move around a lot with the grapple as well. I'd say that... Let's see. Uh, durability drain is also always good to get. Uh, I was here's... Saying... Another reason we should skip the speed thing is considering what happened earlier. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that the brakes are a, a higher priority. But for that we need to get that one, which we're just short. Uh, yeah, let's see if they have something new to say to us when we get in here now. Uh, still no javelins. Yeah, not a single one. Okay, let's let's go for a heavy cargo one. Because there should be a lot of easy stuff in here. Are they going to speak up? Uh, I just read something disturbing there. Uh, what then? They abandoned regular farming in favor of alley farming and something else. Basically, there may be no regular food farm at all. Three. Uh, to my knowledge, algae is a lot more space efficient. Like, part of the story that's going on down there is that the planet is overpopulating overpopulated already so there is a lot less room for well, livestock and such and a lot of a lot of sci-fi settings have it where <coughs> uh, most of the food is produced by in is is either algae or produced by algae <laughs> but yeah tasty it would not be <laughs> Really enough for it can't be just only on LDA. Uh, LDA is very protein rich, I think that's I think what most of that is yeah, would feed you then. Uh, but yeah, once more, I'm no expert on any of that. Yeah. Yeah, something about the only that doesn't feel right. Like there's, there's it feels like there's something uh, wrong in that uh, idea. Your lock pressure levels increasing. Uh, yeah, I, so I stopped for a bit there to turn on the uh, the book light that I use for my face. And the heck is this? Asteroid shards. Those are new. Uh, this is yeah, yeah, I noticed that on the OBS that my face was getting a bit too overlit by the screen because the light outside is dying down. So yeah, I put on the face light. Ah, let's, leave, right. let's leave that alone. What is that holding together? Oh, okay. Uh, it's not... <clears throat> it's hold, not holding anything to the side, it's just holding this fence in place, this, which is also new. Uh, oh yeah, sound... This place is pressurized, so of course the sound is different. What well, I was up, like, what the hell happened? Um, actually, with this place being pressurized... Oh. Okay, but why the hell was the cockpit not pressurized? Okay, we got lucky there. <laughs> if something had hit the fuel barrels... Oh. Well, they did hit something. Um. Uh, here we 
we go. Oh, audio data. Okay, <laughs> just a jingle. Uh, where the heck is the reactor? Oh, uh, yeah, I should have. There's the reactor. Uh, you can sort of identify it by the outline of its holding and of its casing. And you can sort of see it itself as well, but let's back off a bit from that. Okay. Is that crate still burning? Okay. Uh, yeah, let's... Let's just work on the floor as usual and get all of this fuel out of here. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, no, no. We're... Wait, how did... This place is now unpressurized. This place... Okay, so we basically somehow lost all of the atmosphere in there, in here, instead of, uh, yeah, the, the atmosphere sharing. Uh, actually, Airlock pressure levels increasing. Yeah, I, I should have activated on the in the inside. Airlock pressure levels dropping. I, I'd say that this place would have had more than enough air to fill that place up as well. Oh well. Early access. And let's let's not hover too close to the fuel barrels as we cut. The, the sound is the sound is still as if it is pressurized in here, I think. Or is it because of that suit upgrade that we bought? Uh, let's collect that just in case, so we don't accidentally hit it. And somehow later you hit it anyway. Is this thing... Is it making those sounds because it's starting to break down? Is that a good or bad thing? Bad. So, are you still in the shed? Because we don't have much option, we could end things now. And yeah, it doesn't seem that we get any story or much story to go now. But let's at least pull off the most valuable stuff of this. Oh, yeah, Oh, it was in one of the nacelles. Okay, send you down. Now let's... Okay, this one has some extra shielding on the sides. We can keep that in place. But we are going to cut the bumper free. That way we can move the side panels out of the way. I would not have to wonder, why does this spaceship have bumpers? The, the hell is a fuel tank doing over here? Like, <laughs> that must have complete. Just <laughs> any micrometeor could have hit that and blown this thing, well, not apart, but off course at the very least. Or worse, blown off the damn window. Okay. Oh, well, at least, really. You know, burn mark the window. There we go. Okay, okay uh, <laughs> that works. I feel like whatever just playing that shit was not a genius. Yeah. Okay, these are at least light enough to just be moved around. Okay. Go. And there we go. Solid security. 
Mm, let's see, we're almost at the time. And yeah, there isn't too much new about this thing. So, yeah. Uh, what do you say that we blow this thing up? Just for fun. No, why not? Okay, just taking a seat for us to enjoy the show. Oh, bloody! Okay, do we even have enough range? Oh, come on, use the feet of a shield. Not that they do much. There's one of the fuel tanks. Can I reach that? Nope. Uh, this mi this might get very flashy for people watching. Probably could have been taking a better shield off of the side here. <laughs> Actually, I can take a better shield. An actual shield! Okay, if I'm unlucky, this thing will just cut me in half as it gets knocked around. <laughs> There's the fuel tank. Come on. Oh. You are in the way. Actually, not what I wanted to shove. Get back here, you. <laughs> okay. Now we can enjoy ourselves some fireworks. If we get close enough. I should have gotten the range upgrade for this thing. doesn't have to reach. Come on. Oh, well, come on. <laughs> it was just a beam. See how... Okay, I really want me to get close for this. But go cut... Did I cut that? Another... There we go. And that did just about nothing. <laughs> okay. That did go boom. Yeah, that, that didn't even... Okay, these fuel cells are pretty pathetic if they can only set off something that's like right next to it. Then again, uh, vacuum. Yeah. Who? I think it might have been worse if you have a pressurized uh, the cockpit earlier or before they pressurized it. Oh, uh, well. Credit so, actually, I, the engine is still in this thing, right? What are you going to do with the engine? Uh, give a bit of a show what happens if one of... Actually, I don't think I've ever accidentally cut one of those. So it'll be a bit of a show for the both of us. Uh -oh. Salvage deposit accepted. Credit. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I, I have no idea what. But uh, yeah, that that's some hot stuff, as you can see, as it's. It's melting the nanocarbon. And yeah, if, that, if we get too close to that, it'll melt us as well. Silly enough, we can still salvage this thing. So, uh, yeah, let's get our little firecracker. And have it melt its way out. 
And, uh, yeah. You guys have fun with that. Uh. Right there. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's about as much as, okay, my face is still getting primarily lit by the screen, apparently. Oh, uh, well, it's not like I'm trying to do this professionally or anything, so not that it matters too much, but, uh, yeah, let's leave it at that for now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, antenna, nacelle, and over here, class 1 reactor, almost half a million. So, yeah, basically, if you, uh, basically, you, you, you to uh, make the daily requirements, you just need to pull out the reactor and some other things, and then you've got the base of the, da the daily covers, yeah, the daily debt covered. Is it going to show anything new with us? Oh, hello. Hi, folks. Got a priority message coming in from corporate. Everyone, put down what you're doing and have a listen. Maybe they're going to give us some holiday time. That'd be awesome. Hmm. That would be a first. Probably just another Paulson kid getting a cushy exec job. Hush up now, y'all. This is an important message to all Link Salvage Division employees. It's come to our attention, thanks to a very loyal member of our family, that there has been talk about forming a shipbreakers union. A union is a dangerous thing, where extensive fees are extracted for so-called representation of your workers' rights. At Lynx, our top priority is already your well-being. This is why union activity is strictly prohibited by your contract, for your own protection. To safeguard you and your work, we are immediately dispatching an administrator to every salvage sector. This administrator will oversee operations and ensure proper employee conduct. They are authorized to correct worker behavior by any means, and they will remain in place until we can guarantee company-wide integrity. Until then, remember, the company is your family. The union is your enemy. Thank you. Ooh. <laughs> no holiday. Told you. That's wild. I haven't heard anything about that union stuff. Have you? Of course not. Probably happening around the Martian districts. They've always been quarrelsome. You heard anything like that, Lou? No. Oh. Hey, Weaver, do you know when our administrator will show up? Uh, a week, maybe? Coming all the way from HQ at Jupiter Gate. When they get here, we'll need to be on our best behavior. Oh, great. Ah, it's nothing to fret about, all right? But they are going to be checking everything. Salvage logs, transmission records, operational efficiency. Oh, great. You'll be fine, Kai. It's not a performance review. Lou's right. Now let's just try to keep our heads down and weather this storm together. Now go catch some rest. See you all tomorrow. I vote we throw Weaver out of the airlock because I'm pretty sure he's the one that... Hey, like, don't worry, this is a closed channel. There won't be a lock. This uh, really isn't good. They're gonna make our lives hell. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared. I'm sorry for involving you. But you need to know I'm not gonna stop fighting. Whatever happens, I'll make sure nothing comes down on you. Blue out. Yeah, because your dumbass sent... <clears throat> because her dumbass sent a message to us on, a, <laughs> on their own servers. So yeah, they are going to see that and they are going to probably suspect us of being part of that union no matter what. And yeah, 
I've got a feeling that it's probably Weaver that ratted us out because he immediately talked about yeah, it probably being over at Mars, which sounds like deflection to me, or distraction to me. Uh, speculation only. Yeah, uh, what the corporate president the person said there was Other too bullshit. much. Yeah. That's one of the few moments I just wanna punch the said person in the face. Yeah, the, that the thing about uh, exuberant fees, uh, to my knowledge, I'm not part of a union myself at the moment because they're, yeah, not, <clears throat> uh, not a full-time worker, contract work. Uh, but yeah, the, basically, if you were to try and take on a company for better uh, for things to be better on your own uh, you'd be totally fucked because you'd only have your own funds to deal with you know, to fight them and well as a company they have much much more than you as a union you can you know, pool resources for one and also just strong arm companies by striking and such so yeah a union if if you can join a union in whatever work you're doing, do it. Because otherwise yeah. you're going to get fucked over on your on your own. Yeah, and also a disclaimer. Normally I'm not quick to want to use violence and such. So when I say I want to punch the person in the face, that may very much mean that I really cross my line. And yeah, that person there just crossed my line. Yeah, she she just comes across as a yeah, like a plantation owner, not putting up a, a nice little smile and saying that uh, yeah, basically all the PR speech about we are we are your friends, we are your friends. And in the in the meantime, under the desk they have a pistol aimed at your crotch. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. Blackbird Interactive, end of Act One. Thank you for playing. We look forward to continuing the story in the future. I, I am curious. I'm. I am really curious if they are going uh, sort of like uh, papers, please, with this. Like you could, uh, you could, that you could pick sides, or if it's a linear story. We'll have to see it in the next big story update. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Let's see. Anything, one of these is audio, the jingle, and the other is a text message, and there's something flying around in here. Link's internal messaging, backup work. I mean, what is this? Response, it, employee termination, Eduardo Faris. Attention, effective immediately, employer Mikey Murphy of Operations Division is no longer an employee of Lynx Corporation due to insubordination, corporate dissension, and misuse of company funds. The search for his replacement is already in motion. Carry on, EMF. <coughs> HR. Resources Earth Village. Huh? Uh, wait, employee, tell me, me. They kill him, didn't they? Well, seeing as. Well, we don't know what position they were in, but if they were uh, a shipbreaker like us, then yeah, they could have just killed them outright. Okay, backup work. Uh, yeah, they seem to even have it legally, that they can legally kill their own employees at their own whim. Yeah, that this was in horrible. the previous one. Let's see, this one snuck in a message along with the jingle. Oh, that's from me. Mortimer Corny, reminder daily, uh, so reminder solar day statuary can holiday cancelled. Greetings, friends and fellow co workers. Just a friendly reminder that all Lynx employees, excluding the executive team, are expected to report to work on solar day this year. An exciting way to celebrate and honor the through lifeblood of our solar system. Let's do our sun proud and continue our pursuit of pushing humankind deeper into the galaxy one additional day a year. Yeah, bullshit. Basically, um, a holiday for the executives only, when it should be for everyone. 
working. Of course, there were, there will always be people working on the holidays, but at the very least, those get like triple the pay. And those are essential for like so in <clears throat> in shops and such or so transportation. Yeah. Oh yeah, Lynx is basically every bullshit uh, corporation tactic and uh, strategy practice in one. Uh, well, let's see if the outro... Would... Actually, I'll just use the normal outro instead of yeah, this in the scene things. So I'll have to think around with this a bit more to see if I can perhaps make it work a bit. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look at anyone who may have been watching this. Da -da -da. Oh yeah, that is okay. Just two bots in here. If if you are not, I'm I'm only seeing two names in here. If some if other people are watching this at the moment, uh, sorry, you're just not showing up in chat, so I can't you know, mention you unless you speak up or something. But you can stay quiet if you want. But anyways, then we we still have special thanks for you, Dick here. Oh, you're most welcome. Uh, yeah, let's see. I think that the audio mixing in this went a lot better than the previous videos, but I, I should take up a, a habit of just watching these videos afterwards to see if I need to adjust the audio and such. It's just, yeah, with, with nobody watching it can be uh, difficult to know if we're being quite if we're being drowned out, if we are drowning out the game or not. <coughs> But anyways, to anyone watching now, later on YouTube, uh, tomorrow, something Sunday, I'll have to find two new games for that. Uh, yeah, after that, Giant Scissors Kabuto. Yay! But, as always, until then, until then. Be safe, folks!